Blue Dobbs. Welcome back. Global warming is a complex, controversial issue. And on this broadcast, we have been critical of both sides in this debate. We've challenged the orthodoxy surrounding global warming theories and questioned uh, more evidence on the side of the uh, ice age and prospect in the minds of some. In point of fact, research, some of it shows that we could be heading toward cooler temperatures. And it's a story you will only see here on Lou Dobbs tonight. Anes Ferre has our report. Will the day after tomorrow bring a deep freeze like that shown in the movie? Research more than 50 years ago by Serbian astrophysicist Milankovic suggests that ice ages run in predictable cycles and that the Earth could soon go back into one. How soon? In science terms, it can be thousands of years. But what will happen in the next decades is still up in the air. Part of the science community believes that global warming is a man-made threat, but Dennis Avery of the Hudson Institute joins those predicting the next 20 to 30 years will actually bring cooler temperatures. The Earth's temperatures have dropped an average of six-tenths of a degree Celsius in the last two years. The Pacific Ocean is telling us, as it has told us ten times in the past 400 years, you're going to get cooler. Avery points to a lack of sunspots as a predictor for lower temperatures, saying the effects of greenhouse gas warming have a small impact on climate change. Believers in global warming, like NASA researcher Dr. Gavin Schmidt, disagree. The long-term trend is clearly towards warming, and those changes in carbon dioxide are completely dwarf any changes due to the solar cycle. In a speech last week, President-elect Obama called for the creation of a green energy economy. Still, others warn that no matter what you think about climate change, new policies would essentially have no effect. There's very little we can do about it. Any effort to restrict the use of carbon dioxide is going to hurt us economically and have zero effect on the climate. As Singer says, a lot of pain for no gain. And three independent researchers... Joining me now, three leading experts in Manchester, New Hampshire. We're joined by Joseph DeLeo of the International Climate and Environmental Change uh, Assessment Project. Good to have you with us. Thank Joseph you, is also the co-founder of the uh, Weather Channel. And in Washington, D.C., as you see there, Jay Lair. He's the science director of the Heartland Institute. And in Boston, Alex Wisner-Gross. He's the co-founder of uh, CO2Stats.com. Good to have you all with us. Uh, let me, let's put a few numbers out here, at least the empirical uh, discussion, and see what we can make of it. Uh, the first is the National Oceanic and Atmospheric NOAA uh, Administration uh, has got some very good records on temperatures, average temperatures, in the United States back, dating back to 1880. And here's what these numbers look like. You've all seen those, but to help us all, uh, uh, the audience, and uh, most of all, <laughs> me, to get through this, uh, these show the warmest years on record, 1998, 2005, uh, and 2006, rather, and 1934. 2008 was cooler, in fact, the coolest since 1997. And it's intriguing to see uh, that graph there, uh, the, uh, the graph that we're looking at uh, showing uh, some question that uh, the warming trend uh, may be just a snapshot in time. Uh, the global temperatures uh, by NOAA uh, are seven of the eight warmest years on record have occurred since 2001. The ten warmest years have all occurred since 1995. So I, let me let me start, uh, if I may, uh, uh, Joseph DeLeo. Uh, your reaction to those numbers? Do you do you quibble with uh, what they represent? Yes, I do. In fact, uh, if you look at the satellite data, which is the most reliable data, the best coverage of the globe, uh, 2008 was the 14th coldest in 30 years. That doesn't jive with the 10th warmest in 159 years in the Hadley data set or in 113 or 14 years in the NOAA data set. Those global data sets are contaminated by the fact that two-thirds of the globe's stations dropped out in 1990. Most of them rural, and they performed no urban adjustment. And Lou, you know, your people in, in, this, in your uh, studio know that uh, if they live in the suburbs of New York City, it's a lot colder in rural areas than it is in the city. So now we have more urban uh, effect in, in those uh, numbers uh, reflecting uh, that show up in that, that enhanced or 
uh, exaggerated warming right. in the global data sets. So, your thoughts on these numbers, because uh, they are intriguing. They are a brief snapshot, admittedly, uh, in, in c comparison uh, to the total extent of time we're talking about here. I, I guess we could go back 4.6 billion uh, years. Let's keep it in the range of something like uh, uh, 500,000 years. Uh, what's your reaction to those numbers and, and your interpretation? Well, well Lou... Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jay. Uh, Lou, uh, I'm in the camp with uh, Joe and uh, Fred Singer and uh, Dennis Avery, and I think more importantly it is to uh, look at the sun's output. And in recent years, we've seen very, very low sunspot activity, and uh, we're, we're definitely, in my mind, uh, not only in a cooling period, we're going to be staying in it for a couple decades. And I see it as a, a major advantage, although I think we will be able to adapt to it. I'm hopeful that uh, this change in the sun's output will put some common sense uh, into the legislature uh, not to pass any uh, dramatic cap and trade or carbon tax legislation that will set us in a far deeper economic hole. I believe Mr. Obama and his economic team are well placed to uh, dig us out of this recession in the next 18 months to two years. But I think if we pass any dramatic legislation to reduce greenhouse gases, uh, the recession is going to last quite a few more years and we'll come out of it with a lower standard of living as a result on very tenuous scientific grounds. Uh, Alex, let me turn to you. The, the issue of the carbon footprint, the, the generation of greenhouse gases, specifically CO2, uh, the, the, the concern focusing primarily on the on the carbon footprint uh, and, of course, uh, generated by fossil fuels uh, uh, primarily. Uh, what, what, are, what is your thinking as you look at that, uh, that survey of 130, almost 130 years uh, and the impact on the environment? Well, Lou, I think regardless of whatever the long-term trend in the climate data is, I think there's a long-term technological trend, which is that as time goes on, our technology tends towards a smaller and smaller physical footprint. That means in part that in the long term, we'd like technology to have a smaller environmental footprint, burning fewer greenhouse gases, and ultimately becoming as small and as environmentally neutral and non-invasive as possible. So yeah. I think regardless of the climate trend, I think we're going to see less and less environmentally impactful technologies. Uh, and, and, you know, to, uh, to, to be straightforward about this, I mean, that's sort of where I come down. I, I don't know that it uh, matters to me whether there is global warming or we're moving toward an ice age. It, it, it seems really uh, that, uh, Joe DeLeo, that we should be reasonable stewards of the planet. Uh, uh, and the debate over whether it's global warming or whether it is moving toward perhaps another ice age or it's simply business as usual uh, is, is almost moot here in my mind. I know that will infuriate the advocates of global warming as well as the folks who believe we're headed toward another, another ice age. What's your reasoning? I agree with you, Lou. Uh, we need conservation. We need uh, uh, an all-of-the-above solution for, for energy, regardless of, of whether we're right and, and it cools over the next few decades or it continues to warm, a far less uh, you know, dangerous scenario. Um, and that means uh, nuclear, it means uh, coal, uh, oil, natural gas, uh, geothermal, uh, uh, all of the above. Jay, you, you made the comment uh, about the impact of the of solar sunspot activity, uh, uh, sunspot activity, uh, the 11-year the cycle that we're all familiar with. There are much larger cycles that run out 12 to 13,000 years as well. Uh, and we also heard in an Esperay's report uh, a, 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 a disregard, if you will, for the strength and the significance of solar activity on the Earth's environment. How, how do you respond to that? It just seems silly to not recognize that the Earth's climate is driven by the sun. Uh, your Chad Myers, when we were on a month ago, pointed out that it's really arrogant for mankind to think he controls the uh, climate of the universe. Only 4% 
of our greenhouse gas is carbon dioxide. 90% is water vapor, which we have uh, no impact uh, over. And if we were to try to reduce greenhouse gases, uh, with China and India controlling way more than we do, and they've boldly said they're not going to cripple their economy by uh, following suit, uh, our impact would have no, no, uh, no change in temperature at all. In Europe, they started carbon trade, uh, carb cap and trade in 2005. They've had no reduction in greenhouse gases, but they've had a five to ten percent uh, increase in the standard of right. living. Uh, we, we don't want to go that route. So thank you, Alex. You get the last word here. Uh, are you as dismissive of, uh, of uh, the carbon footprint as uh, measured by carbon dioxide in the atmosphere? No, not really. But I, I do think that in the long term, efficiency is where all of the gains will come from. I think efficiency should come first, carbon footprint second. All right. Thank you very much.